Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory out on that field. It's Leonard Fournette's Jaguars going up against Miller's Texans. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. A moment ago, the defensive starters introduced, and this crowd here in Houston fired up by Brian Cushing and the rest of the Texan starters. They get set to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles' offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get, and can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, ten touchbacks, they're workhorses. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And we are underway here on EA Sports. Fielded about a yard deep. <laughs> And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. They're led out by their 6'4 quarterback, the former Pitt Panther, Tom Savage. And Tom Savage is one of those guys that when you look at him, you see the potential that's there. You get a chance to watch him practice and see him throw the football. But he hasn't had many chances to play in games. And you just wonder if given a full shot, what exactly would it look like? On the ground, this is Lamar Miller. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And let's take a look at the Texans' offense. When you think of the Texans, you think this is a team that likes to throw the football. In 2016, though, they weren't very good at it. 29th overall in passing, but they were eighth in rushing. So let's see if they lean on the running game to start this contest. And they're hoping to get more consistency throwing the ball downfield. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Savage now to throw. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. Now a play fake, and it's Savage. Right side, caught Fedorowicz. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter, to kick it away. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. We'll 
call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they're brought out there by their fourth year quarterback from Central Florida, Blake Bortles. And partner, this is a young man who's got it all. Big, strong arm, strong-legged runner when he decides to take off with the football, but it hasn't all come together for him because he's thrown way too many interceptions in his career. Has to take care of the ball better because when he does that, he can be one of the better starting quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, to your point, in three years, 51 interceptions. He's also fumbled 29 times. Now a play fake here on first down. And his first pass is incomplete. Now the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it but they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. Now the rookie first rounder from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. The Houston Texans in 2016 on defense defied convention. Why? J.J. Watt missed most of the season, so you would expect them to struggle a little bit. But in fact, this was the number one overall defense in the NFL. They stopped the run, forced teams to throw the football, and really got after them with a terrific pass rush. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, it's Bortles. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Back deep for the Texans is Tyler Irvin. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. And here comes the Jags defense as they get back out there. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. with Miller. Now it's Savage. His throw incomplete. The Pro Bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. And we take you through the starting defense for Jacksonville. Let's take a quick second here and talk about linebacker Paul Puzlesny. I know a lot of people love to put him on the all-name team. I put him on the all-veteran team. Understands the defense perfectly, can line up everyone, and still has the ability to make plays from his linebacker position. He is a vet, been in the league since 2007. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Savage, and his throw is incomplete. They were trying to get the connection with a former Buckeye, Braxton Miller, and it's third down. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball, and in an out route, 
plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot, balls out of his hands, receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes, different. And nothing but daylight ahead. Touchdown, Houston. Akeem Hunt, 81 yards, and the Texans have taken the early lead. Well, he's used to running at that distance. Here, he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it, and we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Nick Novak on now for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the result, a Houston touchdown. Novak out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. CD, let's talk quarterbacking as the Jags come back onto the field. What do you see them doing? Bortles, Henny, they've even got Brandon Allen, who has a great first name. What do you think? He does have an excellent first name, he's doesn't he? a good ring to it. And he does have a way of having teams respond to him. But let's face it, it's going to come down to Blake Bortles or Chad Henney, which is a bit of a surprise considering they kind of went all in on Blake Bortles picking up his fifth-year option. But if it's an open competition, Chad Henney could sneak in there and take it because he doesn't turn the ball over that much. But let's face it, wild card time, Brandon Allen might get his shot. Six-round pick last year out of Arkansas. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Still first down. the penalty it's four down and he'll take this up only to about his 18 yard line he'll get three of those penalty yards back here leaving him with a second and 12. well obviously they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage instead now they're dealing with second and long i thought they would have passed it after the penalty probably wish they would have now Now Bortles throwing on second down. Throw left side complete. That's Lee. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, they get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Shotgun now for Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. He 
game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Here's Brad Nordman now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded just inside the 30. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Texans take possession. Texans offense taking the field again as we start to get toward the end of preseason. Who's it going to be under center? Is it going to be Watson? Is it going to be Savage? What do you see? It's going to be very interesting to see how it all goes down. Right now, I think Tom Savage has the advantage. He's the incumbent, and he's playing well in the preseason. In fact, he was 8 of 9 throwing the ball against New England, and accuracy is at a premium in the NFL. Deshaun Watson showing flashes, but still learning his way. 3 of 10 throwing the ball against the Patriots, but he did run in a touchdown. But you know, fans love new shiny toys and sometimes that mentality can eke its way over to the front office. Yeah, I think right now Tom Savage has the advantage. I expect Deshaun Watson to have the job before the year is over. He's got it complete to Braxton Miller. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Fresh set of downs here. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So second and ten here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Throwing on third down, it's Savage. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Normally when I talk about DeAndre Hopkins, I'm talking about accomplishments. In this case, I'm remembering that he lost nearly 600 yards in receiving from 2015. He had less than 1,000 last year. Yeah, and his touchdowns dropped from 11 to 4, so now he's hoping for more consistent quarterback play. backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Second and goal, ball on the seven-yard line. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. To 
defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Now the Purdue man, this is Akeem Hunt. No gain on the play that time, so a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. Looking at this situation, if you're at the one, the two, maybe you go for it. From here, you kick it. I agree. I think you have to get points in this situation. Fourth down, I don't chance it at all. I put the points on the board and go back and regroup. On is Nick Novak now for the Texans field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. It's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. Now this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. On play action, now Bortles. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Every time you throw an incompletion, you think, boy, that's a wasted opportunity, don't you? Yeah, because last year they were number two against the pass was this Houston defense. And J.J. Watt is back for all of 2017. They'll be that much stronger. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Partner, you know I'm always going to listen to you first, okay? But when I hear the PA guy say, tackle in the backfield by Clowney, my first thought is to go back to his days at South Carolina and that one particular hit <laughs> in the bowl game against Michigan. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. This one maybe not as big as that, but my mind goes there as well. Yeah, but he's a talented individual because you can use him in so many different ways. Obviously, a defensive end. He can play stand-up outside linebacker and a nickel in sub situations. Rush him inside against offensive guards is usually too quick for him. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. This is taken at about the 14. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Tom Savage and the rest of his Texans offense heading back out there. And they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes, go routes, right? What's that Why? you love? What's that oh, you four love? verts. Four verts. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. <laughs> Some fancy footwork, but not much room to operate. Just up past the 25 and no further. A gain of three, second down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Here we go. A play fake to Miller. Now Savage. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Well, he was just trying to contain DeAndre Hopkins, and he got a little too close. And because of his ability to line up in different spots on the field and come at you from different angles, different guys have to cover them and all of them have the same issue how do you do it without interfering in this case it didn't get done here we go now green 39 green 39. savage on first and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Malik Jackson getting in there from his defensive tackle spot to snow him under for a loss of four. Throw on second down to Savage. And he's got it, Fedorowicz. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Savage on third. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On is Nick Novak now for the Texans field goal. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. And Novak's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So he splits the uprights there. And I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. Now 
Now it's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. down Bortles dumps it off to Fournette and this one will go to the 28 yard line call it a gain of three and it'll be second down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware a ball may come your way settled in here time expires on the first quarter of action plenty of scoring here already you're watching the nfl on ea sports the nfl on ea sports is fueled by gatorade the sports fuel company Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. the 30 to the 32. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This time, it's third and 3. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And that's complete to Lewis. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And he will have a touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that'll be considered a fumble.
They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. One way to get recognition, partner, make some big plays. Bernard McKinney was only put in the NFL last year with at least 100 tackles and five or more sacks. It's a big, long linebacker in the middle, but boy, does he have the ability to bend and make plays. Again, it's Fournette. Oh, nice move. And he's got some space here. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. 31 yards there and a first down. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. down. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Savage ready to lead his troops back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes, but right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. They begin with a run by Miller. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. They'll run it again with Miller. And he powers his way up past the 30. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Let's go! Play action. It's Savage. Runs through the contact. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time, and another first down. 
When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Savage on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. on second down and he is out of bounds inside the 30 and they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down I do have to admit I like it when it all comes together when the top part catching the football right whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it comes together with the legs in this case the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. back the offensive unit they time out and now they get set to line up as we resume action The Texans on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Set. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now it's Savage off the bootleg. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Calais Campbell able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Class Campbell, all six feet, eight inches of him, signed away from Arizona in the offseason. He's going to be a mainstay, the defensive front for Jacksonville. Eight sacks last year, hoping to build off that. Those eight sacks were just one off his career high. Yeah, he's an excellent player, a whole lot of man. On is Nick Novak now for the Texans field goal. This officially a 55-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. to the INT on the last drive. Airing it out for Hearns. That's Hearns. He's got it. Touchdown, Jaguars. Allen Hearns, 45 yards. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. 
And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And that'll make it 13-7. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Here's Myers now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tom Savage and the rest of his Texans offense heading back out there. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. Let's go! Blue Lady! Blue Lady! They'll fake the handoff with Savage. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Here we go now. On first down, it's Savage. And incomplete. C.J. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch. But underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. On second and ten, Savage. Complete to Lamar Miller. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. 31 yards there and a first down. Well, you think he loved the protection he had there all kinds of time. And you're so right. How could you not love that? Great protection. The big guys up front really locked in on it. No one gets near the quarterback. He's got all the time in the world to survey the field and deliver for a first down. One of the big boys up front, a big reason why they're also winning, too. Savage. Caught here by Griffin. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. A 
I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. And when I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. wants to throw yet again. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Williams. And they'll get to him just inside the 15, even after that strong run we witnessed. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The Texans on third down, three for seven so far in this game. Here it's third and two. Hey, hey, let's go. Off the bootleg, Savage looking for his running back, and he's got it. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four, and this looks like it's going to be holding. Well, they've already allowed three sacks in this first half. Now a holding penalty. So I think drastic measures had to be taken, right? The regular way was not working. He was getting hit almost every snap it felt like. They had to try and keep him upright. The Texans on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third down and 12. Throwing again is Savage. He's going to go up top for the ends. He's got Strong. Touchdown, Texans. Jalen Strong, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Texans will add on to their lead. So a tiptoe catch back in the end zone, so tough to do, but he made it look pretty easy. It certainly did, and the back of the end zone is treated the same way as the sideline. You have to get your feet down in bounds for it to count as a catch. How about the backgrounds of some of these guys, though? Did they work out? Maybe some of them were ballet, some dance, who knows? Yeah, you and I were talking the other day. I remember one of my favorite kid shows growing up. I don't know that I want to name it, but guys like Lynn Swan, they used to be on there showing their ballet skill. And you have to remember, Remember when they were kids and their parents were telling them to take the ballet classes? You know they were fighting them like crazy, but right now they're saying, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Novak is on to attempt the extra point. And the lead is now 13. That time a six-play drive, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. Novak out now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do.
They begin with a run by Fournette. And yeah, nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. On second down, here's Fournette. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. From the gun, it's Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Fournette, a first down carry. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. And Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. I love it. A scout told me that with his running style, this guy's always the hammer, never the nail, but also has the ability to break it off big, too. I was on the field for a game he had last year at LSU, and there were some college boys warming up. <laughs> and then Leonard Fournette walked in. He is a man. Full grown. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Two minutes remaining. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. So here we go, first and 10 now. Shotgun now for Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he showcases the spin. A pretty good game before he's taken down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second down, here's Bortles. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Now Bortles. Rivera's got it. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Portal. 
Daniels gives to Yeldon on the draw. <laughs> Ooh, with a juke. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Down in this one, they needed that Still score, but they'll have to hold at least for the time being. You're exactly right. Points that they had to have, as you said, they have to regroup now and see if they can get them another way. to throw once more. Green's got it over the middle. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Again, it's Bortles. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to hit Rashad Green. And that takes us from second to third down. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Here we go. Three, 90. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Jadevian Cloudy with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. This officially a 55-yard attempt. He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Texans on offense early in the first. Hunt's got nobody around him on the catch. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Jaguars ball early in the second. Lewis has got the grab with fumbles here. Texans recover the ball and return it for a touchdown as they take a 13-0 lead. Here I throw deep down the field is caught, and 45 yards later, he'll go in for the score. Third down from inside the 30, trailing now by just a touchdown. The catch will be made deep down the field. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
No back out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do real, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Throwing on first down is Bortles. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. So we've got a second and five. Play action. It's Bortles. And he goes out right around the 39. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley? Oh, definitely. All the veteran names? You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. This is Fournette. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. They'll run it again with Fournette. Room here to run. Fournette, a first down, still going. Spinning again. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A big hit, first down gain of 26 yards. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Fournette on the counter. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On second down, here's Yeldon. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. They lost four there, and it's third down. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing. 
but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now. Making some big time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 11. Now Bortles. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. This will be from 56 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now a play fake here on first down. And that is incomplete here. So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Second and ten, going with Savage again. And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. And the Jags grab it. And his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Recovery, it's Bortles. Blitz coming and down he goes. DJ Reader forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Going to run the draw with Fournette. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. Right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play this time. And it'll be a third and long situation coming up. No gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Third and long, it's Bortles. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. 
Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. And now out comes Houston. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now, those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again? They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. Now let's go! They'll try and get the run game going. This is Miller. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, here's Miller. And not much there at all, as he'll get this only up to about the 11. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. The Texans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 11. Let's go! From the gun, here's Savage. And finding Fedorowicz. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Savage. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Able to corral him right at the midfield strike following the sparkling display of footwork. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make this a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Six yards to go here on second down. Tenth carry now for Lamar Miller. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. on first. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Hey. 
Second down now after the incompletion. again. Savage. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Texans on third down. Five out of nine thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. is Nick Novak now for the Texans field goal. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him, but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Here we go now. Come on, come on. They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man on a crossing route. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. To throw is Bortles. Completes it left side to the tight end, Lewis. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done.
They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. That is caught inside the five. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Allen Robinson, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars are back with it a score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Now Myers for the extra point. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. So that drive spanned five plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Here's Myers now to kick it away. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A first down carry now for Miller. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. On second down, here's Savage. Miller on the catch over the middle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. So the offense has it first and 10. Green, 39. Green, 39. They go play action with Miller. Now it's Savage. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And it pops free. All loose and bring up second down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Watch tight end, watch tight end. Watch tight end. Three, 
The play fake to Miller. Now Savage. And this one is incomplete. The Texans on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and ten. Savage wants to throw yet again. And now another one thrown incomplete. Here's Shane Leckler now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? increased his production in this game and now he's over 100 yards and break out your calculator partner because his yards per carry went up it's significantly right big time jaunt all the way to the end zone the extra point now coming from Myers and they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Myers now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. <laughs> Tom Savage ready to lead his troops back onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. Let's go. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Oh, 
Savage from the shotgun snap. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller. And it's second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Out of the gun, Savage. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Telvin Smith coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. Savage. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. They give him a gain of 37. lining up first and ten. Now a play fake, and it's Savage. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield, but they came off of a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch him on their heels. Second down following the incompletion. Roger, Roger. Check, check, check. Here we go now. Boom, They'll run it now out of the gun. <laughs> and he'll slice his way down to the 30 with a pickup of seven. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. And by the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Savage on third. And he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. Dante Fowler coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for a fourth quarter lead. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. Well, and it's his third missed field goal of the game, much to the displeasure of this home crowd, some of whom are heading for the turnstiles. And unfortunately for him, he'll be a hot topic of discussion on talk radio in the week ahead. But I think this goes beyond him. This has really not been the greatest of performances from the top to the bottom. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. He has a chance to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark on this drive. And most of the time during a game, people aren't keeping track of individual statistics. Are you sure? Well, a lot of the runners kind of <laughs> know. 
but I'll guarantee you someone has sent word into the offensive line that he's got a chance to get over 200 on this drive. That should give them a little extra motivation because they love it when backs break that barrier. Absolutely. We'll see if he can do it. On first and 10, here's Bortles. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Fresh set of downs here. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already. And they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. From the gun, it's Bortles. Caught out left side by Robinson. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It's a solid pickup of 11, and it's second down. Second down now after the pass completion. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, and the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it, for them to get downfield that quickly? And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. They come out here in the eye. Portals to throw on second down. Powerful running. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Bernardrick McKinney coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And this offense on third down today, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and goal. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he's going to go down again. Whitney Merciless in there to drop him. And back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. 
And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal, a sack on third and goal, now brings up a decision on fourth down. So on now comes the kicker. It's Jason Myers. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielding about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Hurry up, here we go. Ah! Here's Savage on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And on second and ten now. To throw again. Savage. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. It'll be dropped at the 30. The shifty move couldn't free him. Four yards on the pickup. And they're going to face a third down. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. from the gun. Savage. And yeah, this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Leckler now on as he'll punt this away. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Jaguars getting set to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Fournette. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. 
offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, but they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Now Bortles throwing on second down. It's caught right side of turns. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there of 20 yards. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And now a first down following that long game. Three, three, 90, three, 90. Here's Bortles to throw. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Robinson. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run with Fournette. And an alley to run. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Yeldon. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped to the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The Jaguars on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This will be third and six. Now Bortles will give to Yeldon. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So, Charles, I think from a defensive perspective, you have to look at that field goal there and consider it a win. You were able to keep them within a touchdown, so no question about it. That was the kind of stand that keeps you in ball games. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Tom Savage and the rest of his Texans offense heading back out there. I would imagine you want to win every game big, but... If you're a quarterback in the NFL, this is the spot that you love. You've been dreaming of it since you were a kid, playing in the backyard or the front yard, wherever, where you went through those imaginary situations. Now it's real, though. What practice have you put in since the OTAs, the mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. A field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. He'll look to throw. Completion left side to Miller. Touchdown, Houston. Braxton Miller, 84 yards. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the posts, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch tomorrow. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And we are tied the fourth quarter. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. <laughs> Bortles to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's a good first step, but several steps still to go. They still have time for the possible game-winning field goal. Time for them to be quick and 
and hurry at the same time. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. going to get this one down to the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Now the Jags are moving quickly in the hurry up. To throw is Bortles. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Lee. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Well, time not on their side here. In fact, a lot going against them. They do have a small glimmer of hope. No one likes to play extra football. They want to go for the win right now. After the penalty, it's Yeldon. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Now the Texans want to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The Jaguars on third down. Just a 20% success rate at two of 10. This is third and four. Bortles going to give to Yeldon. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. They tried to run right to the teeth of the defense on third down, but uh, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And his kick here is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So he comes through in a hostile environment, and you'd have to imagine that's the game winner. Without a doubt, the way this one's gone, they didn't want to take any chances in overtime if they could help it. And that was one heck of a pressure-filled kick.
Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. Green, 39. One last throw here for Savage. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. So long from Houston.